The Indo-Russian alliance is a rare example of true friendship in diplomacy. The two countries have remained close allies despite changing global circumstances. The Indo-USSR alliance stood strong during the Cold War. Even after the Cold War, India and Russia cooperated closely. In fact, today, India and the US have forged a close alliance. Yet, New Delhi and Moscow have been able to maintain strong ties as well. The Indo-Russian alliance, however, haunts China the most. Beijing has been looking to ramp up expansionism over the recent past. In fact, it even eyes the territory of its two big neighbours, India and Russia. However, New Delhi and Moscow are now joining hands to push back against China. Hi and welcome to Tier 5 Global the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Shubhangi and in this video, I will tell you how India and Russia are planning a nuclear blow for Xi Jinping. Russia's President Vladimir Putin is all set to visit India later this year. During his India visit, Putin will hold an in-person summit with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the first time since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic last year. The agenda of the Putin-Modi meeting seems to be becoming clear. The two flamboyant leaders seem to be working on mutual plans to deter an expansionist China. New Delhi and Moscow are looking to get together and drive China away from the Russian Far East region and the Indian Ocean region. India has presently signed or is negotiating arms purchases worth $15 billion from Russia as per reports. From long-range missiles to fighter aircraft and assault rifles, India continues to look at Russia as a major defence partner in the process of modernising its own armed forces. However, the main highlight is the prospect of India leasing a second nuclear-powered attack submarine or SSN from Russia. India is already looking to induct one Russian SSN into its fleet in 2026. If India and Russia strike a deal for leasing a second SSN, then New Delhi's naval power in the Indian Ocean region will be bolstered dramatically. Nuclear-powered submarines are crucial assets as they can stay and operate underwater for very long durations. In fact, their endurance is restricted only by food supplies for the crew. Also, they are equipped with tactical weapons like torpedoes, anti-ship cruise missiles and land attack cruise missiles, which make these submarines lethal in character. SSNs form battle groups centered around aircraft carriers. With two SSNs in operation, the Indian Navy would be able to operate two independent carrier battle groups simultaneously, one centered around the INS Vikramaditya and the other around INS Vikrant. India's plans to lease a second SSN from Russia carries a significant Indian Ocean connection. New Delhi has always been concerned about China's attempts to expand its presence in the IOR. New Delhi considers the Indian Ocean region to be its privileged sphere of influence. However, Beijing has been trying to mount trouble on India under its string of pearl strategy by building a network of ports and other infrastructure surrounding India in the Indian Ocean region. Often, Chinese military vessels are also spotted in the Indian Ocean region near India's Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, by shoring up its naval power with Russian submarines, New Delhi is sending a loud and clear message to Beijing. Stay away from the Indian Ocean. In fact, India's enhanced naval power must deter China's hawkish behaviour, as the paper dragon would also understand that it might have to pay a heavy price for any miscalculations. Prime Minister Modi has been quite clear and forthcoming about India's readiness and willingness to help Russia develop its Far East region. Speaking at the Eastern Economic Forum, Modi said, I am delighted to address Eastern Economic Forum and thank President Vladimir Putin for this honour. Modi then went on to appreciate the importance of the Russian Far East capital Vladivostok. He said, In Indian history and civilization." Sangam has its special meaning. It means confluence or coming together of rivers, people and ideas. 
In my view, Vladivostok is truly a Sangam or confluence of Eurasia and the Pacific. India's Prime Minister added, I applaud President Putin's vision for the development of the Russian Far East. India will be a reliable partner for Russia in realizing this vision. In 2019, when I had visited Vladivostok to attend the forum, I had announced India's commitment to enact Far East policy. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also invited governors of the 11 regions of the Russian Far East to visit India, presumably in order to deepen Indo-Russian cooperation in the Russian Far East. Prime Minister Modi's focus on helping Russia develop its Far East region has an intimate China connection. Chinese influence has been growing rapidly in the Russian Far East, a sparsely populated and resource-rich region. Through this vast territory, an expansionist China is also trying to achieve its ambitions of becoming a near-Arctic state. In fact, Chinese communist hardliners go as far as staking claim upon the port city of Vladivostok. This is why Prime Minister Modi's remarks about the significance of Vladivostok, he is directly undermining China's position by making it clear that the port city holds a lot of importance in Indo-Russian cooperation. In fact, India is already helping Russia secure and protect its Far East region from Chinese expansionism. In 2019, India extended a $1 billion line of credit to Russia for the development of its Far East region. India is also looking to develop a sea route linking India's Chennai with Russian Far East city of Vladivostok that will pass through the South China Sea, securing the Russian Far East territory and at the same time needling China. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Modi also announced that India's biggest shipyards will partner with Russia's own Zvezda for construction of some of the world's most important commercial ships. Moscow and New Delhi, others looking to enhance their maritime power jointly in order to overcome the imminent challenge posed by China's growing maritime belligerence in the Indo-Pacific. As such, the idea is to secure the entire region from the Indian Ocean region to the Russian Far East.